My name is Sebastiano Tomada. Um, I'm a uh, photojournalist um, working for SIPA Press in various um, Italian magazines. The, the, the work is very satisfying. The work is very stressful. You never know, you know, how it's going to be. You never know if you're going to be able to get your assignments done. You never really know if you're going to be able to um, get in contact with the people that you're not supposed to. So it, everything is very in the air, you know. You don't know if you're going to be able to do something two hours before you actually do it. Um, so in that sense, it's a little bit stressful and confusing. But it's, it's fascinating, you know. I get to travel a lot, and I get to work a lot and I get to see a lot of parts of the world that are not really accessible on a, on a general basis. But I think that the worst was in 2010. I was in uh, south of Kandahar and we were going on a clearing operation, part of the um, Operation Moss Track that was going to clear all the south of Kandahar. And we were walking on this small alley and it was, it was very tight and the ground was was very humid, it was wet, it looked like somebody just got it wet. And everybody was very confused, nobody knew what was going on. And the first guy in front of the patrol was with the mine detector. So we're walking, walking, and two hours into the patrol, all of a sudden we hear a huge explosion. And the guy that was in um, mine sweeping um, hit a landmine, an um, old Russian landmine. He lost both his legs. But the thing is that once that landmine went off, we got attacked from both sides and we were pinned down for about four or five hours into a firefight. Well, it's, it's interesting because you always get um, one side of the story, usually with um, news outlets, especially news outlets like Al Jazeera, BBC, CNN. They all pretty much feed off of their own news. You know, if Al Jazeera is there at the right moment, at the right place, then BBC and CNN are pretty much going to feed off of that same kind of information. So it's very unilateral. You know, it's always pretty much one point of view. Um, and they don't really, they go there, they try to get their piece done, but they already have a conceived idea of what's being done, you know? And for me, it's very difficult because, not difficult, sorry, for me, it's very different because I actually get to work a lot with the locals with the people. I get to interact a lot with those that are being affected by a revolution or a war. So you get very different points of view and you always understand and you always know that big news media outlets are always corrupting the news information for one side of the story. Future Plans are pretty much uh, doing my few assignments that I have here in um, Lebanon and uh, get the right context and the right um, smuggle routes to get into Syria. Um, it's been a tough it's been a tough fight over there and uh, it's been a tough one also for many journalists. I just lost a friend, uh, Ramir Shlik, um, who just died over there two weeks ago with Marie Colvin. And um, I need to get into Syria, I need to get into Homs and I need to get in Kassir and uh, get my material, get my assignments done and try to bring as much material back into um, Lebanon and as soon as possible. Um, to be honest, I don't know. I think that um, what is going on in Homs now is grotesque and is crazy. I do think a lot that what is being published and what is being um, um, shared um, both on YouTube with um, videos is very exaggerated um, I'm sure that the fight is very strong and that a lot of people are losing their lives but I don't expect it to be as crazy as everybody thinks.